just to quickly tell you a little about the Jacob Burns Film Center, the Burns is kind of like a, it's like a force for social change disguised as a movie theater. <laughs> and just historically from the beginning, part of the whole purpose of the Burns was to create avenues of expression and communication. The Jacob Burns Film Center is a five screen art house in Pleasantville, New York, that is very much a suburb outside of New York City. This building was the first cinema built in Westchester County. And it was a theater till 1987. But you know, when the multiplexes came in, all these theaters, they twinned or they triplexed. And this ultimately closed. And it was empty for three years. Then it was turned into photography studio and offices. But it really wanted to be a theater. We opened up this theater 18 years ago and we thought that in the first year we would have 500 members and we opened up and within six months we had 4,000 members. So it was sort of this, this kind of thing where people were just totally ready for it, they were waiting for it. And I sort of understood it immediately because what had happened is that everybody has moved out from the city. So they're all coming out here and going, well, what's going on here? What's available here? And there wasn't anything. There was, however, there was a, an art theater in Scarsdale, which is much below us, which was a single screen theater, which was just about to close. So the timing was kind of perfect. And it was actually a theater that was run by my father. I grew up in a house where the conversation around the breakfast table was always around movies. So there was a sense that, wow, there's something about this medium that's really impactful. That's the place that you can get to that you can't get to with other arts. Brian's an amazing programmer. He combines a love of cinema with a really open, curious mind, and that's a great recipe for eclectic, expansive kind of programming. This is the opening night of Meditative Life 2019. Uh, yeah. I really love this series. It's something where I think we all get an opportunity to step back for a moment and to think about the path that we're on and to think about whether it's the path we want to be on and to think about maybe we could use some more solitude in our lives. You can approach everything of interest through film. You can have series that are minutely programmed around this and that. And the beautiful thing is that if you're in the right place, and this, as it turns out, is the right place, there's an audience for almost everything. Welcome to opening night of jazz sessions beyond the notes. I'm Maria Traversa, the programmer of this year's series. Tonight we'll see how improvisation helped an Esquire magazine art director create one of the most iconic images in jazz. Jazz Sessions is one of the many, many film series here at the Jacob Burns Film Center. This one is particularly popular with the JBFC crowd. We have live performances after the films, receptions, and they're very beautiful evenings of film, music, and community that people look forward to all year. This place, this venue, this really Film center, cultural center is important, not only to Pleasantville, but to Westchester, and it's a real model for independent films throughout the nation. It's centered here, but it reverberates out much more widely. This is really a cultural gem, and it brings community together, and it connects people through the arts in ways that you know, they, they probably wouldn't otherwise. The building that we're sitting in now, the Media Arts Lab, was added to the campus in 2008 with the idea that this would be a laboratory for exploring visual storytelling with a particular focus on students and teachers. 
It's not just a film appreciation or a media literacy program, and nor is it just learning the art form, you know, making films. It lives in the middle of those things. Creative Culture is our fellowship in our residency program. Residencies are for feature filmmakers. We have a house next door and we support a filmmaker and often an editor to come and spend an intensive time of about four to six weeks living on campus and working on their films. And the fellowship program is our program for short filmmakers. We are looking at filmmakers who are post-college, working on developing short films and honing in their artistic voices. The first of two films I'm working on is going to be a verite documentary. I'm interested in studying how religious spaces operate in New York City. So I'm shooting entirely inside of a really old mosque in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn. I'm Muslim as well, I'm a Muslim American, so for me it's a special documentary to make. But it's the first one and I'm learning as I go along. Sean gives us this like really nurturing comfortable space where we can talk about what we're worried about and he offers solutions to that and he makes us feel like we are professionals and we deserve to be there. The film that I'm making now is a scripted film but it's kind of bringing in some documentary elements into the scripted framework. As a young filmmaker I couldn't really imagine like a better environment for where I'm at in my career in terms of having the support to make the things that I want to make and to be associated with a organization that's celebrating different voices and it's really humbling to be a part of. The idea of exhibiting film and making film and having a community of real people together is really important to the fabric of the Burns. Even though the screen is crucial to everything we do here, uh, the other part that's really crucial is just being in a room together. And so here our fellows bounce ideas off of each other. And they have this real connection and camaraderie with one another. And across the street when our audiences sit down and watch films, you know, the lights come up and they turn around and they talk to each other and they sit in the lobby and debate things. And so much of that means that, you know, places like movie theaters like this have become the new community centers. I want to welcome you to a very special edition of Rarely Seen Cinema. You are literally the first audience to see this movie in the United States of America. It's why you go to the Jacob Burns Film Center often, I think, to kind of see something that you're not going to see anywhere else. Jonathan Demme fell into our life for like 12 years. He lived in Nyack and he adopted this place as a place that he first started to just go see movies because he was excited by that. And then he kind of came in and said, hey, I'm going to see movies here, so maybe we can do something. And the first thing he proposed was something called Rarely Seen Cinema. He came here every month and he brought a film that was like a forgotten child to him. Looking at Bertolucci's filmography, so this Tragedy of a Ridiculous Man was made in 1981. Have, has anyone here seen it already? Probably so, right? Can you, anybody? What, wow. Ah, uh, that's great, because you're gonna, I think you're going to love it. So They were um, every kind of genre. They were from all over the world. They were things that you had heard of. They were things that you had never heard of. Let's make some music. Saddle Up Saturdays was a series that he did because he just loved westerns. If I signal you to come, you come. If I signal you to charge, you charge. And if I signal you to run, you follow me and run like hell. The Jacob Burns Film Center is one of the few places that are still like showing movies that actually make tremendous efforts to get prints of films to show, so it's really exciting. Lois Smith, who appears in Four Friends, is in the audience with us tonight. It's like so amazing. The amazing thing about Jonathan is that everybody who met him instantly felt like, oh, I've never met anybody like that. You know, he had this kind of, not only instantaneous warmth, but a kind of enthusiasm that was just so infectious and that he just swept up people under his wing. Everybody felt his kind of radiance. And when he passed, that was totally shocking. And it was a 
It was a crazy loss for the institution. We really loved him. And we sit here for 30 minutes just like this. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't care what anybody thinks. I feel like in the last 18 years, I've come to love movies so much more. It's a function of just watching lots and lots of movies and being around people who bring so much knowledge and so much insight and so much love of movies. And that just sort of makes you appreciate the art that much more. This is the feature debut of Argentine filmmaker and former fashion designer, Lucio Castro. And so thank you all for joining us for a special evening with a truly legendary Hollywood producer. 71 is the number of theaters that are participating in this event.